Hey guys, it's Tasha from The Bookish Gal, and today I'm going to be doing my January wrap-up. First of all, I'm in a new location just because I'm filming at like 5.30 and it's kind of late, and the lighting's not good in my bookshelf room, so I'm just filming it here for today. My bed's messy, don't look at it, and um, also I sound really stuffy. I'm getting over a mild flu, so do not mind my mannish voice, but we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, I read a lot of books this month. I read five books, one graphic novel, and three audiobooks, so in quantity it was really good, but in terms of quality it was just okay. I read some really good books, some okay books, and then I read some really crappy books, so yeah, it was kind of uh for me, but it's okay. I At least I read a lot. Although I only read two books off of my TBR, the rest were like borrowed, so that was a fail. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and get started with the graphic novel, and I'm, if I'm looking somewhere else, I'm looking at Goodreads on my phone. So the first book that I read was uh, Why the Last Man Volume one unmanned by Brian K. Vaughn and he's the author of Saga that series which I love this one is not as good well at least the first volume was not as good it's more like a comic book series I feel the illustrations it's about the world without men he's the only man alive his male monkey is the only male animal alive in like this freak thing all of a sudden all the men just like cough up blood and die even all the animals die so it's really weird um, I thought it was gonna be like really interesting and action-packed and like just super cool and like I don't know I don't know what I was expecting it just wasn't what I thought it was gonna be it talked a lot about politics like who was gonna run the government it had some weird women gangs uh, it dealt a lot with science I think being the only man alive had to do with genetics I don't know it wasn't what I was expecting but I still gave it three stars it was okay I think it would get better as the series progresses but for now I'm not going to continue moving on to the audiobooks I'll just do all those first I started Yes Please in December Yes Please by Amy Poehler but I finished it in January and I gave that three stars um, I mentioned it before but I started listening to it because I love Parks and Rec and I love her on it she's so funny I'm not really into audio uh, audio auto how do I say it? I'm not super into autobiographies, but hers I just really liked because I really liked her and it was pretty interesting. It was really funny. I think, yeah, three stars I mentioned. I got Yes Please from a free trial from Audible and then I found out about this app called Overdrive and you can borrow free audiobooks and ebooks and so that's freaking amazing because audiobooks are hella expensive. You have to put in your library card information. But yeah, it's totally free audiobooks. It's super cool. So I borrowed um, The Short Second Life of Brie Tanner, which is the Twilight novella. It was really short. Well, it's kind of big for a novella. It's like two, 200 pages about. Um, and he just talked about Brie's life from when she became a vampire to when she died. The beginning was kind of slow kind of boring but then it kind of got more exciting her trying to figure out why she was even created in the first place and meeting the Cullens so it's kind of sad for her I really grew to like her as a character I think I gave it three stars then I listened to perfect which is by Ellen Hopkins and it's impulse number two uh, it's kind of like a companion series you don't really need to read impulse to read perfect perfect is from the point of view of four different teenagers and their lives kind of intersect uh, as the story progresses, but it's about their view of what perfection is for them because it's different for every person and it was really really sad. Um, I liked getting to hear four different voices because they had four different uh, narrators for the book so that was really cool. Two boys and two girls. Um, one has like an eating disorder because you know viewing herself having the perfect body and others like into steroids. Um, one is viewing perfection in terms of his career and it's just all very different but all very relatable and I think it would hit home for a lot of people. Um, we all like strive for perfection in different ways and feel pressure from various people and influences so it was a really like emotional book and I think it would be for a lot of people and I really did like it. So moving on to the actual physical books that I read, the first book was Rumble also by Ellen Hopkins. This one, as you know her books are in verse so I really do like that writing style uh, but this one was about an atheist and his brother committed suicide and um, it wasn't, I think out of all the books she wrote this is the least interesting topic for me just because it focused focus solely, not solely, but very highly on religion, um, but it was still really interesting to read, so I think I gave that one three stars. At about this time during January, after I finished that, Bout of Books started, and I, like, non-officially participated. I, like, tried to read as much as I can, 
but I didn't like officially do anything, like any challenges or anything, but I did read I think three books, so that was super cool. So during the Bad of Books week, I read The Book of Ivy by Amy Engel, and that was amazing. Like, I need to buy a finished copy, and I can't wait till the next book because it was so good. Five stars all the way. I think it's, I don't think it's dystopian. I think it's post-apocalyptic. I don't know. It's about a society though, like after the war, um, it's like this little town area place and there's two sides and one side they kind of lost in their little battle for the grounds, the other side won, so the losing side marries off their children at 16 to the winning side. The leader of the losing side is Ivy and she gets married to the president of the winning side. He kind of is in charge of the whole area since he won. Um, his son and she is in charge to kill him. Since her father um, wants to kind of like start a rebellion, that's why she's set to kill the son of the president. She thinks the son is going to be a certain way, but he turns out to be totally different from what she thought, and it was just an amazing book. I am really dying for the sequel. I don't know how much books there are going to be. Maybe just two, I don't know, but oh, it was so good. It was just executed so good. It was so interesting. I thought it was great character development for Ivy. Oh, I, uh, I just really love it. Next I read Girl Interrupted by Susanna Kaysen. This I borrowed from my cousin. Actually I think it's about Susanna Kaysen because I think this is an autobiography kind of or like a memoir type of book. Um, yeah, but it's in 1967 and she goes into a psychiatric hospital, sorry. Um, so she has some mental issues. It kind of just describes her time in the psychiatric hospital. Um, it talks about her fellow patients and what was going on at the time and stuff like that. Uh, it seemed really interesting. I'm really interested in like mental disabilities and reading about that. It just wasn't executed well for me. It dragged a lot. I didn't enjoy the writing style. It was kind of just really confusing. So yeah, I didn't really like this book. I gave it two stars. I read Slam by Colleen Hoover. This is the third Colleen Hoover book that I have read. I loved it. I didn't love it as much as the other two, but I still gave it five stars. It was really good. Uh, you should just probably go into this blind if you don't know what it's about, but it does focus on slam poetry, which is really nice. It features some nice slam poetry in there. My heart still, every Colleen Hoover book, she's just... I like to describe the situations that Colleen Hoover puts her characters in and so my husband knows her as like the mean author because of the horrible things her characters go through. Ah, oh, but it was so good. I love Slam. Finally, the last book I finished, which was yesterday the 29th, uh, Dark Triumph by Robin Lefevers. Robin? Robin Lefevers. This is the second book in the His Fair Assassins trilogy. The first book was Grave Mercy and I really loved that one. It was five stars all the way. Seriously, this series made me fall in love with historical fiction. I couldn't give two craps about historical fiction previous to this, but it is so interesting. The time period is like 1500s. Um, it focuses on Anne of Brittany um, the, for the political aspect and her during her reign. Um, but this series is about assassin nuns and uh, this it, each book is about a different nun from the convent. While the first book did have some romance, um, not some, it kind of did have a lot of romance, but it was really good and not overdone. And it focused on killing. This book had a lot more killing, um, it had a good romance, but it wasn't too much. It was pretty subtle and I really loved it. Um, I fell in love with this, the rom romantic interest. Um, but this one focused a lot on the personal history of Sabella, this, this girl. And it was just so sad, oh my gosh, it was so freaking sad. Uh, just throughout the book you kept learning horrible things about her past and her family and it was uh, really heartbreaking and disgusting and horrible but it was so good. I just highly recommend this series. I love the covers. Um, I got them for the last two books I got for review from Hot and Mifflin Hardcore and so yeah I'm just so happy I got those. Thank you. This is an amazing series. Well, I still need to read the last book, but it's so good. I love it. Historical fiction for the win. So yeah, definitely those two books, um, Dark Triumph and The Book of Ivy, was my absolute favorites for January. Five stars all the way. I love them both so much. So yeah, definitely let me know what your favorite reads for January were. Um, put, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know. Put some more books on my TBR like I need anymore. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all later. Bye, guys.